And one of the things that I think, um, you know, you were talking about kind of iterating over time and, and, and how you, you know, change an organization to adapt to all of this. And one of the things that um, I found noteworthy about you is how you've worked uh, with town halls to, because, you know, if you're going to have both the person, both the, the person and the machine working together, there's some change management required. And so often technologists work just from the focus on technology. And yet it seems like you very deliberately and consciously steered into that human element. And how do you bring the people along as you're transforming retail? I'd love to hear a bit about how you think about that because uh, I mean, I think that's one of the big challenges because retail has got so many distributed associates and, and the gestalt of all those people working together was what gives the, the great customer experience. So how did you do that? <laughs> Yeah, so that's a great, great question. And um, certainly not proposing I'm an expert in, in, in doing that, but I, but I think it's a, you know, it's a really important point. Um, and in fact, there was, a, there was another article published recently saying that the, the up and coming leaders at the moment are those that are beacons of calm, uh, resilient and adaptable um, leaders who aren't amplifying the stress of, of the situation uh, that we're all finding ourselves in at the moment. Um, and the ones that are being empathetic and working with their teams and you know, strongly championing diverse talent, I think is really critical uh, through this time. And, and as you say, I, I personally um, believe very passionately in ongoing communications uh, to a team and, and driving through transformation. Um, I've set up uh, weekly um, town halls where I can communicate uh, to the whole team what's going on um, and I think it's really important in those sessions to also involve leaders from the business uh, to involve technology leaders from from out the outside world as well and to come in and, and educate and, and explain and, and and just to help everybody stay aligned on the vision uh, that we're all heading to because all big transformations have challenging challenging moments in them as well as good moments um, and as long as everybody can understand how their piece of work is critical and fits into the overall bigger picture um, and the opportunities for people to develop new skills and so on, then, um, then I think that that's really important. So, yeah, something I, I, I used to do uh, regularly, as I said, I used to, to do it weekly in one organisation uh, and ensure I tried to do it different time zones. So do it during one time zone one week, different time zone the next week, but always recording uh, the public, the, the the broadcast, so that people could play it back, and uh, everybody could just stay aligned, and also involving um, the teams as much as possible themselves as well, so they could also um, explain how their journeys uh, were through through the whole transformation. John, you know, you, earlier in the conversation, you talked about how technology can be used as an enhancer and and help you know people be a better version of themselves. You know, we're seeing a lot of use of tech, you know, effectiveness at work with AI and automation. You know, do you think there's really like a hard line to be drawn in retail? At, you know, at what point, you know, how do, how do, you know, existing retailers use technology to make a better experience and a more effective experience for, for their customers? Mm, no, that's, that's a great question. And I think you know, technologies are, are giving us so many capabilities that, that we never had before. Um, in data being always available, being able to automate um, and provide you know, some kind of artificial intelligence on top of that. And because of the amount of data that exists in retail and ever increasing amount, those tools are super important and super relevant um, to retail as they are to other industries. But I think the, you know, the customer experience is, is still you know, really critical and it's how you bring that element, as you say, of the human touch um, backed up by the technology to provide the customer with more product authenticity, being able to democratize bespoke experiences that you might have with the best sales associate in the world, but how do you enable all those other sales associates to, to provide the same experience and technology is a key enabler in that. And then also to make sure the, the experience is consistent. So when the customer then contacts customer services, do they know what the sales associate said to you? Again, technology can play a, a key part that wouldn't be possible without it uh, in, in that spirit. Um, so uh, I think it is that 
it's that human touch on top of the technology, which is where retail can can really differentiate itself. Um, and ultimately, the customer will always remember the human element. I mean, I think um, you know, Maya Angelou had it right when she said, people will forget uh, what you said to them, they'll forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Well, thank you, John. This has really, uh, it's been really insightful. I really appreciate the time you're willing to spend and share uh, your insights from uh, your experiences in retail. Um, for the broader audience, if you're passionate about digital transformation, uh, interested in coming on the show, please feel free to write an email to dtv at infostretch.com. And thank you for spending time with John and myself.